Hi, I'm Greg LeBlanc, and I'm here at the Haas School of Business uh, with Pedro Domingos, who's a professor at the University of Washington and the author of a book called uh, The Master Algorithm. Welcome, Pedro. Thanks for having me. So, Pedro, you've written this book called The Master Algorithm, and in it you are uh, prophesying that all of the different schools or tribes of machine learning that are out there are ultimately going to become unified. I think most people who are not in the world of machine learning don't realize that there are all of these, these different tribes. Uh, what exactly makes uh, for a tribe? Why are there all these different tribes in, in machine learning? This is actually no different in machine learning than in any other field, right? In politics, there's conservatives and liberals, and then, you know, different sciences that are usually different schools of thought, different theories of the same thing, and machine learning is no different, right? These are just people who have, at a heart, different intuitions about how to learn, whether it's to learn by, you know, simulating the brain or evolution or, or the scientific method or, or reasoning by analogy, right? These are all perfectly plausible ways to learn, uh, and then they lead to very different uh, um, algorithms and whole schools of thought grow up around them, which often then get frozen, right? And people stop seeing how they should connect. And I think that's part of the agenda is that they do connect and that they will connect more in the future. And, and why is it so important that there be this kind of unified uh, theory of, of machine learning? Because the, the, the really big learning problems cannot be solved with these individual learning algorithms. Uh, there are things that we can do with them, but the really hard problems like curing cancer or creating worldwide web knowledge bases or, or home robots, uh, we need better learning algorithms that solve each of these uh, types of machine learning is usually good for some things but not others. But there are problems like, for example, having a home bot where you actually have all these problems at the same time. And if you just try to solve the problem by glomming pieces together, you just hit this wall of complexity, right? Like AI is limited by complexity. So if you can unify them and simplify them and really get down to the essentials, then you have a basis to actually solve these harder problems. Now, some people uh, think that machine learning may not be able to solve every problem, and that it's really only best suited for some subset of, of problems related maybe to the internet or to uh, finance or e-commerce or maybe medicine. Is, is there really any area of uh, human life that um, cannot uh, benefit from a little machine learning? I think machine learning can only solve solvable problems, right? Some problems are just not solvable on first principles. Some things are fundamentally unpredictable or they're fundamentally intractable. And, you know, machine learning doesn't do miracles, right? Having said that, I think the applications of machine learning on the Internet are very prominent these days, things like, you know, web search and recommended systems and whatnot. But, but application, but machine learning is already applied very widely outside of things like the web for things in, you know, uh, in people's lives, for example, selecting job candidates or, or, or um, you know, picking stocks. So, so there are already a lot of applications. I don't think we can a priori say that something that is done by people cannot be done by machine learning. In fact, people often say like, oh, you know, AI systems can do this and that, but only people can have, um, you know, social intelligence or, you know, or emotional responses. Those actually are easier to do than, than some of the more, you know, cognitive stuff. So you know, we'll see. So a lot of people are concerned that uh, with the spread of machine learning and AI that uh, we're not going to have anything left to do, right? All the jobs are going to disappear. Um, is that a concern that, that we should take seriously? I think in the near term, most jobs are not going to disappear. Some will, but a lot of new jobs will be created. There'll be dem more demand for existing jobs that comes from the fact that some things have become cheaper and whatnot. A lot of jobs will be transformed because they will be done with the help of machine learning. Uh, but, but I think, so, so it's not like there's nothing to worry about. There are things that we should, you know, uh, uh, be concerned with. But this notion of, you know, the computers and robots doing everything better than us is not for the near term. It may come to pass in the long term, which could be, you know, several decades or even more. I think when that happens, what we're going to see is a very different world from the one we have today. I think we get to a point where people don't need to work. Right? We're all just independently wealthy, and the idea of working is going to seem like a barbaric relic of the past. Okay. Thank you, Pedro. Thank you. Mm -hmm.